So w something that you just said, seatbelt laws. Um, you and I talked about this before, but I have I have every once in a while I have a, a comment about seatbelt laws and how they're unnecessary and sometimes helmet laws. Can you explain for the people out there that have have not been to a scene like I'm sure you have seen? What, what what's the purpose of a seatbelt law? So I think that's a super good question. I get people asking me that all the time because um, I do a fair amount of seatbelt enforcement and education. Um, and so I have people ask me all the time, why do, why do you care if I wear a seatbelt or not? Isn't that a personal choice whether I wear a seatbelt? And I tell people a little bit facetiously, but, but a little bit honestly as well, if you choose not to wear a seatbelt, you get in a crash and you get ejected onto the side of the road. If you don't utilize any public services, then I think that it becomes a personal right. But we all know that's not a reality and, and it's not how it should be. Um, you know, as soon as you get in a crash and you get ejected, the police are going to show up, the fire department's going to show up, the paramedics are going to show up, uh, the coroner, if, if there's a fatality involved, the coroner's going to have to be involved. These are all tax, I mean, these, these are really what our taxes go to. These, these are services provided by our, as taxpayers. And so when we're utilizing those services, it becomes now suddenly more than just a personal choice. It's now your choice not to wear a seatbelt is affecting everybody who pays taxes. And that's just the financial side of it. Once you get to the whole insurance side, and I have a very close friend uh, that I went to high school with that is my insurance agent, he says that's a whole nother argument because people who choose not to wear seatbelts and then getting crashes, and now we have a big insurance bill at the hospital, well, guess who now has to pay higher vehicle insurance rates to cover those ex extraordinary bills, right? I mean, we've got to now raise our own rates because other people's bills in hospitals are causing our insurance rates to go up. And, and that's just the reality of the world. Whether I agree with it or disagree or like it or don't like it, that's just the reality of how that works. So there's certainly a, a huge financial impact when people choose not to wear a seatbelt and then they get in a crash. And people are right. If they don't get in a crash, then, then there's some truth to that, right? Because they aren't affecting any of that. But that's just the one piece. The other piece really becomes down to what happens to the person who has to go deal with that? Um, and, and I'll be honest, I have put, uh, unfortunately, I've put small children in body bags. I've put adult in body, adults in body bags, and they're from crashes. And some of them have been unbelted. And quite frankly, some of those crashes are very survivable. I have literally had to pick up dead bodies because somebody didn't put a seatbelt on when they would have gone home to their family that night had they just worn their seatbelt. The other thing I tell people all the time is I have never, ever in 27 years doing this job unbuckled a dead person. And so when we think of, you know, what really can a seatbelt do, it's more than just you. Because quite frankly, people have loved ones out there. They want you to come home at night. As a police officer, I would rather, I'd choose not to have to go out on a fatal crash and then see the dead body, deal with the dead body the way that we have to deal with it. And then sometimes, and I've had to do this a couple of times in my career, deliver a death notification to surviving family and tell them their loved one's not going to come home tonight because they were in a crash. And, and so there's, there's impacts there, whether it's emotional impacts or the toll that it takes on our law enforcement officers of delivering those death notifications. All of that stuff comes into play that maybe could have been preventable if somebody would have worn a seatbelt. And so to your point and your question, yeah, are there people out there that think that, that seatbelts is a personal right? Absolutely there are. And in some aspects, are they correct? I think in some ways they are, but I think the trade-off is like everything, there's two sides to that coin. And the other side of that coin is kind of those costs financially, emotionally, that end up getting borne by somebody. Somebody has to carry those. And, uh, and that's what happens when we choose not to wear a helmet or not to wear a seatbelt. So it's really not big brother trying to come in and do anything. It's really, we want you to make it home safe. And I, I use a tagline, I'm on social media a little bit, and I use a tagline all the time that we want every seat at the table filled, right, at dinner. And so the only way we can do that is to get people to be as safe as they can. That's not just seatbelts, it's slowing down, it's not driving reckless, you know, it's putting your helmet on if you're on a motorcycle, all those kinds of things. But really, our goal is to keep the community safe, and the best way to keep them safe is to use the safety features that we have in our vehicles. It's kind of, I, I, the other thing I use all the time is I say, well, you know, ABS brakes, you don't have to have those either. We just take brakes off your car, and, and you can try to stop like Flintstone would, right? Um, but we don't want to do that, because now we have advancement in technology. Let's use the advancements we have for our good to keep us all safe so we can all make it home at night.